Good morning here from the Congo Pride. After braving some stormy weather last night, the ship finally got in today into Warnemund, Germany. However, where we're going today is in two hours into the country into Berlin, Germany. That's right, we are gonna take a tour today with Sandra's Tours. We booked it outside the cruise line. Today's our first tour with her. We have a couple more later this week and we'll let you know how they go. But so far, good reviews and we can't wait to get into Berlin. So now the ship's getting docked here and we're gonna get off here in a couple minutes and have a great day in Berlin. And here we are in mere moments. We made it off of the ship. And we're about to touch down right here in Germany. One, two, three. Boom. We made it. We love a cruise director like Frankie that meets us out here at the port. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for Sandra's tours, we walked right out of the Warnemunde Cruise Center. Looks like Terminal 8. The Rostock Port, I guess is what they call it. And now we're getting on our bus. Boom. Here we go. Well, we're at our first stop. It's actually just a rest stop. So they, the tour does stop about halfway um, on the way to Berlin with a rest stop. There's a little shop back there, um, probably a bathroom, I'm assuming. So they give everyone a little break, kind of stretch your legs, and then we're gonna head on and make our way the rest of the way to Berlin. Right, so we've arrived here in Berlin. It's our first stop. I got a tour bus right over my shoulder over here. Our guide's name is Toby. And uh, right now he's just got our group together talking to us, telling us a little bit about uh, just about Berlin, the population, things like that, and giving us an, an oversight of what we're going to be working on today and what we're going to be seeing and doing. So I'm going to catch up with Toby with an eye. Uh, it seems super nice. Our day has begun. Berlin. Our Berlin tour. Here it is. So right now we are at Charlottenburg um, Palace. This is, it was built in 1699 for Sophie Charlotte and she is the consort of Prussia. So take a look here, it's beautiful. So there you go, stop one, Charlottenburg Palace in the books. Let's see where we end up next. I think we're gonna do a little bit of driving around. Um, we might drive by some sites. We might get out and talk about some sites. We'll mix it up a little bit. Toby, amazing personality. This guy's awesome. We just got off the bus at the Reichstag. If I'm saying that right, you got to forgive us for the pronunciation. <laughs> the Reichstag building, and that's kind of like the German parliament, Math Matthew was telling me. He's the one giving us all the details. So here behind me is the Reichstag building, uh, which is the home of the German parliament known as the Bundestags, and so this is like, you know, for Americans, this is like the equivalent of their Congress, built in the late 1800s, um, and served as sort of the home for their uh, parliament in 1933. Uh, caught on fire. Some believe it was staged. Others believe it may have just happened. Uh, but it was used by Hitler to gain power in Germany as he was the chancellor at the time and it allowed him to receive emergency powers and gave way to the rise of his dictatorship. And now it's actually become the parliament building again for the modern day Federal Republic of Germany. All right, so we made a quick stop on our way to Brandenburg Gate, which we'll talk about in a minute. Here is a memorial, and um, our guy Toby actually referred to this as a memorial to the gypsies and the gays and the people that were murdered uh, back in the day under uh, Hitler's reign. That's what this is all about, uh, the memorial to the Sinti and Roma of Europe murdered under National Socialism. where the Nazis organized the Olympics. At the Olympic Stadium is still in use. This is the one where Jesse Owens, as an Upper American, used to win four times Olympic gold for the United States in Nazi Germany. Maybe you can get an idea how heavy Hitler was. Yeah. <laughs> when the Germans came in, Skynet had used to win uh, some medals. Hitler always down, shaking hands, congratulations. Jesse Owen was winning the four times. Uh, Hitler got up, turned around, he left the stadium immediately. Wow, this Georgia is wild. Road. The Hotel Adlon is right there. Very proper hotel in the area. And our uh, guide, Toby, was just telling us it's most, um, most known for uh, the moment. If you think back, do you remember Michael Jackson when he dangled a baby 
outside the window, but it happened right in one of those windows there. Um, that's wild. All right, so right now we are at the, uh, the Holocaust Memorial, right? I mean, it symbolizes six million Jewish people uh, dying at the hands of the Nazis. I'm not sure how else to say it. And uh, one thing that we were learning a little bit, let me turn the camera around and I'll show you guys what, what we're looking at here. A few things our guide was talking about is, as you go through here, Everything is different sizes, shapes. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. He said it's almost like there is no meaning to it. You're not going to find names or writings or anything like that. It's really designed that it, it can mean whatever you want it to mean, however you interpret it. Every one of these blocks is a different size, shape, angled, things like that. You can walk down all the way deeper into where the blocks go. And you can interpret things however you want. To some people, it really means nothing. It doesn't generate any feeling or emotion. To others, it's, it represents family, friends, uh, history, something very meaningful to, to themselves and, and their own personal history. So as we came out the other side of the memorial here, we noticed uh, the stairs and um, I believe underneath the memorial is a huge information center with a scrolling wall of names. You know, up here they can't really recognize any, any one individual, right? Uh, he said there were 2,711 squares in here in the entire memorial and it really has no meaning. It's just a random number. But if you go downstairs, the scrolling wall lists uh, over four million names that have been collected as confirmed to die in the Holocaust. There's still millions more. And he said that uh, every day that, that list is growing, getting bigger. You would need, oh gosh, years to stand down there and read every name that comes across the wall. So, amazing history right here. Well, wouldn't you know, uh, right here as we had our 40 minute break, we found um, a pizza place. Shocking, isn't it? So uh, we ordered some pizza here, but a few of us are gonna break off and get some other treats and some snacks and such. But it'll be a nice little spot that we can eat and drink real quick, and uh, this ought to be beautiful. All right, so the family's here. We got a little table, a quiet little spot here. They're waiting on some pizza, of course, and I'm gonna go see if I can get a doner kebab and maybe a currywurst, we'll see. All right, so I came in here, I ordered two of the currywurst and a Donner schnitzel, which ought to be a pretty monstrous sandwich, so we'll see how that goes. The guys got the meat right there, they're peeling it off, deep frying things, oh gosh. It's gonna be fantastic. When your Donner sandwich comes out, they're gonna give you a choice of all these toppings. You know, you got some sauce, lettuce, cabbage it looks like, onion, just everything. All right, so the end result is here. I waited in line. You saw the process a little bit, and now here it is, the curry worst. That's right, it's a wiener, or a worst, I should say, that was deep fried, and then it's got sauce and a little bit of curry on it. And I ordered something called a Donner schnitzel, which I thought would be the Donner meat and some schnitzel together. Yeah, you can open it up. But it looks like it's just schnitzel. And of course, here's the pizza that these guys got. Pepperonis were a little different. They're not quite what we're used to, but um, it, the crust and the cheese, everything was pretty good. Oh my gosh! Wow! Look at that. That That's looks right. good. But that is with. Uh, what is this here? It's schnitzel. Oh, okay. Let's well, see give it a try. See what you think. It's unbelievable. All right. So when you're in a hurry and you got to catch up with the group and they're leaving and you just got a beer, there's only one thing you can do. Oh, you have to. Oh, wow, wow. You put that down. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we made it just in time. We finished our food. I finished my beer. And now we're back with Toby. So this right here was the spots of the Fuhrer bunker, which was Hitler's bunker that he hid in towards the end of the war and where he eventually committed suicide with his wife. After the war, the entire bunker was destroyed and uh, what remains here is just this sign giving information about its layout and the history of the bunker. All right guys, so we're at our next stop here and this is basically one of the last pieces or the last piece of the Berlin Wall that is still in existence, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. We'll just take a quick look at it. We're making a quick stop here and then we'll get on with our tour, uh, with our tour guide, but 
Wow, this is pretty intense. So there you go. I mean, you look at it now, I don't know, there's, there's writing on it, graffiti. I don't know how long that's been there, if it's new or if it's old. I mean, it's tall enough. Not particularly thick, but it's just, it was just enough, I guess. Separate East and West Germany. I don't know that we'll do it, but you can definitely take a walk along the entire piece of the wall that's left here. The topograph uh, of Terror's building is right over there. All right, well, here we are at our next stop. This is uh, Checkpoint Charlie, the U.S. Army Checkpoint. This, I think, is a point where uh, they connected East and West Berlin. It's a huge line to get pictures here, and it's funny, our tour guide was pointing out that it is a replica. The Checkpoint building is not the original. It was rebuilt. And he also, uh, I guess some of the locals laugh about it because not only do they have Checkpoint Charlie, but their souvenir shops galore, as well as a KFC and a McDonald's right there. So maybe it's taken a little bit of the history out of it, but it is the actual place where uh, you would go from east to west Berlin. So there it is, a closer look. Checkpoint Charlie, they've got the sandbags there. Great for your photo opportunities. You can see tons and tons of people here. Matthew pointing out, that's a little more of uh, what it really used to look like. You are leaving the American sector, that's a real sign. And the checkpoint, that is real as well. But back in the day, no KFC, no McDonald's. We're at one last stop here, uh, the Island of Museums. Matthew, is that what he referred to it as? The Island of Museums? It's back here? What? Should I be back here? Sharon, it's okay if you're back here. It's just well, the boys' room back here. It's I know, no big but deal. there's no doors on him. I think I just walked by and I shouldn't have walked by. Did you see him? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> squash that part of the vlog. Uh, edit now, clip, clip, and trim. Um, so, uh, Island of Museums, it's just an area that is surrounded by museums here, history, culture, the whole nine yards. I wish we had five days to go into every one of them and take a look. Yeah. We're going to awesome have to make that? a trip back to Germany just on our own. Just, I think I so. I mean, just without a cruise, just come and spend like a week here. And who knew Berlin was so awesome? We've always thought of Hamburg, because that's where my family's from, but Berlin, uh, you rocked it today, did a great job. So what we're looking at back here, it, it's a public bathroom. In the back here... Oh, Jamie, are, there's men, there's... There's no one doing their duty the right bathroom, there. But there's no door. In, in the back here, <laughs> hold on, listen. Why am I telling you when I can show you? Come on, oh, look at no. this. What the heck, we'll give you a little look. Here's an uh, example. Uh, here's the boys' room, right? They got a little toilet right here, boom, boom, boom. They got water. Look, that gives you a little soap and then water. Come on. And then when you're done, hit that and you dry your hands. How cool is that? Public bathrooms here in uh, Berlin. Well, just like that, we are back in the, uh, I guess it's called the, the Port of Rostock and it's the Wernermunde cruise terminal. I mean, if you want to be serious about it. But uh, here we are, we're back in Wernermunde. We had a choice. We could either go out into town, we have a little bit of time left, or we could take our exhausted bodies inside and maybe hit the main dining room for a good meal and crash out because we are exhausted. What an amazing day in uh, Berlin. I, I, Sandra's tours, you guys knocked it out of the park today. The driver was great. Toby, the tour guide, was fantastic. And everything ran smooth and exactly how it should have been. So thank you for that. We can't recommend you enough. Sandra's tours, check them out online. Uh, European stops, multiple places you're going to. You can book with her directly and everything was great and uh, that's it so guys we're gonna wrap it up if you haven't done already subscribe to the channel make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like the video and what the heck while you're doing that hit the notification bell so you know when we got new stuff coming out and until next time from all of us here at Sharon at Sea Travel to all of you thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next video okay